dive into the cutting edge of fine tuning Google Jamma model on free Google Collab Notebook. I would like to thank Aditya for contributing this crash course. Let's get into the tutorial. Hey guys, I am Aditya SK and today I'll be walking you guys through the Gemma fine tuning note. The Gemma was recently announced by Google. Uh, it comes in four different flavors essentially. So it has a 2 billion uh, variant, a 7 billion variant and its respective instruction fine tune variants. This notebook will be going over how to fine tune these models and all the different stages. So it will be split into five different steps. The first one is setting up the prerequisites and the environment. And second one is loading the model and determining which chat format to use. Then the other step would be to load the data set, then format the data set accordingly. And the next stage would be to apply the LoRa configurations and stuff. And the last stage would be setting up for training. And after everything is over, we'll be pushing that to Hugging Face Hub. This uh, notebook is part of a repository called LM Alchemy Chamber. And you can find a lot of other notebooks like Fine Tuning Mistral, Fine Tuning Llama 2, also Quantization. This repository has a lot of notebooks with respect to LLMs. Let's start with the prerequisites, right? So in this tutorial, we'll be fine tuning the 2 billion parameter model using the T4 uh, GPU, which is freely available on Google Colab. If you want to fine tune the 7 billion parameter variant, you might need a 800 GPU in the pro version of Google Colab. And uh, to check if you have all the GPU initialized properly, we can run the NVIDIA SMI, SMI command and you'll essentially get to know that you're running on a Tesla T4. The next stage is to install all the libraries that are required. So the main libraries are the Transformers library and the TRL library. So the TRL library is for the supervised fine tuning, DPO and stuff. And the datasets library is to load the data set and perform operations on it. The PEF library is for parameter efficient fine tuning. And here it has all the operations with respect to how to set the LoRa configs and the LoRa fine tuning. Bits and bytes library is to load the quantized version of the model so that it occupies less space in the VRAM. So now going over the next step, we'll have to log into the notebook. Either you can set the HF token using the Google Collab secrets feature or you can directly log into the notebook using this. I have followed the second method. So the next stage would be to load the model. So here, this notebook is designed in such a way that you can work with all the models and load all the models. But we'll be uh, downloading the instruct model, the 2 billion instruct model, right? Many people ask me, what is the difference between the base model and the instruct model? What would you choose to find here? And I just wanted to show a quick demonstration of it, right? So in this other notebook, uh, I have briefly uh, installed the 2 billion variant and the 2 billion instruction variant. And I have defined this function to get the inference out of it. And uh, when I pass in a query called hello world or something on any query, it tends to spit out gibberish. This is a 2 billion variant model. But the same thing if I do with uh, the instruct fine tune model and following the instruct, uh, instruct template, uh, it, uh, it gives the commented response, right? So the base model is the most raw form of the model and it's generally released so that you can further instruct fine tune upon that and uh, later use that. But the instruction, uh, instruction fine tune model has a particular instruction fine tune which Google or the particular company has already fine tuned it on and you can directly use it. For this particular tutorial, we'll be using the instruct fine tune method, uh, instruct fine tune model and we'll be loading it using the four bit quantization using the bits and bytes library. And uh, we have loaded it and uh, it gets downloaded. The next stage is to determine which prompt format to use. So most of the instruct fine tune models, right, come up, uh, come with their own uh, prompt formats or chat templates. So in the case of uh, Gemma, uh, if you go to the official readme of the Gemma repository here on Hugging Face, you can see they have a chat template, something like this. So it has start of turn, use it, and whichever prompt you're giving, you know, the query you're giving, and end of turn. And it has a start of turn for the model. From this point, it will start generating. Right? So now we can go here. We have defined this simple function called get completion. And essentially it just formats it in such a way and replaces the query with whatever query you have given here. Right? So, now, when we call the get completion function with this particular query, uh, we can get a response out of it and it is able to write the Fib Fibonacci function using uh, recursion as well. Right. So, the stage is 
uh, until the stage we have set up the model and we are able to get inference out of it. So the next stage would be to understand how to load the data set, how to format it. And loading the data set and formatting the data set is the most essential part, right? Uh, generally, I spend 80% of my time in curating the data and coming up with the data set, coming up with the right format for the data set, and 20% of my time in fine tuning. Uh, because fine tuning code is already available out there. You have libraries like Axolotl, Llama Factory that really help you out. But data curation is a very important part. And for this tutorial, we'll be using a premier data set uh, by Token Blender. Uh, he has curated a very good code instruction data set, which is, follows the alpaca style. So what I mean by alpaca style he here is that uh, it has the input, output, and instruction uh, columns. Essentially, you'll have an instruction. You might have an uh, optional input, and the output with, would be the ideal response that should be given. Right. So now we load the data set and next we can visualize the data set here. So it has the input, it has the output and we can see the instruction. So create a, some, uh, create a function that would be the instruction and this would be an input and the ideal output would be, would be this. Right. So uh, the next step is to format it in the way Gemma instruct was fine tuned and using that particular format. So it would be something along these lines. And so we define this function and here is where we are going to format the data set and store it in a new column called prompt, right? So for each data point, we'll be passing in and we'll check if it's, uh, it has an input. If not, then we'll go with this. So in this case, we'll have a prefix text, uh, which is this. And after that, we'll have the instruction, which can be like a uh, code Fibonacci series or write a recursion function, something like this. And you can also have an additional input here. Here is the input, you can specify that. And at the end, you will have your output. That will be the ideal response that has to be given by the model. So after we format the data set, uh, then later we shuffle it. And then we later split it into train and test split. So we have a 80 and 20 split here. So ideally after formatting, your data set should look something like this. You'll have a new uh, column called prompt. And uh, essentially, it will have start of turn user, and it will have the instruction first. Then it will have the input here, and that will uh, end of turn. So this will be your query, and essentially, you will just feed in this, and the ideal response will be this. Model will keep on generating until it receives the end of turn token. The next step in the fine tuning process would be to set the LoRa configurations. We'll be using the PEF library here and we'll load the LoRa config on the other modules required. And we'll also print out the architecture of uh, Gemma here. And this is a brief architecture. And we'll be mainly focusing on a few layers of the model. In this case, we'll be focusing on the linear layers, the Q projection, K projection, V projection, output embeddings, gates and upward projection. And we can determine this by this function, which I have defined, uh, where we get all the linear layers. So these are all the linear layers that we'll be getting. And in the while we are setting the LoRa config, we'll be passing these uh, this list into the target modules. These target modules are the parameters that will be changed. One more thing to consider while setting the LoRa config is the rank or the R and LoRa alpha values. Uh, these values essentially determine how, much, how many parameters is the LoRa going to affect in your model and at what magnitude. A rule of thumb that many people follow is that R should always be two times alpha. So it's just, it's just a general rule of thumb people follow. And by, by, by setting this R and alpha values, we are uh, targeting 3% of the whole model's parameters and we'll be essentially only changing those. Now coming to the training process or the fine tuning process. This is where we initialize the trainer functions. And essentially there's two ways to go about doing this. You have the default transformers library that offers a trainer class and you can also do, th do th this, but I prefer doing supervised fine tuning that is offered by the TRL library. So now we'll, we'll import the TRL library and the SFT trainer and you can find all the arguments that goes into the FT SFT trainer in the documentation itself here. Uh, coming to the SFT trainer, we essentially feed the model, uh, the training data, the test data. And essentially while fine tuning, you only feed in one single column of the data set, which we have formatted. So as we had formatted the prompt, 
uh, and saved it in a uh, prompt column. We'll be feeding that column here. And after that, we'll be feeding the LoRa configs which we had initialized here. Uh, either you can now choose between training for an epoch or training for, uh, for a certain number of steps. Essentially, uh, if I'm training on a huge data set, I would uh, train it for one epoch or two epochs. But for this tutorial, we'll be sticking to the number of steps. And here I have set a very low step count. Uh, moving on, we can set number of logging steps. Essentially, it will show the training loss or the uh, eval loss per step here. And we can have a saving strategy of epoch. And you, you can also report to weights and biases so that you can see your, uh, how the training is going or how the fine tuning is going. So after you have initialized this training uh, SFT trainer, uh, we'll essentially have to call this method and start the fine tuning process. So as it goes on for 10 steps here, and later we define a new variable uh, holding the name, whichever you want, uh, and we'll be saving in that particular name. So when we come to the folder section, you will be able to see the LoRa adapters here, and it has saved there with this particular name. So later we'll be merging the model. So we'll be loading the base model again from the initial Gemma uh, 2 billion instruct, and we'll be uh, merging with the new models adapters, and we'll be uh, storing that in a variable called merge model, and we'll be saving the merge model in a separate folder called merge models where the LoRa Adapters have been merged with the base model. Now, after that, we'll be pushing this merged model to Hugging Face Hub with the same name as what you had given here. And essentially, it gets pushed to the Hugging Face Hub. And now, at the end, you can just pass in the merge model and the tokenizer to test out the improvements and uh, see how the model has improved. This would conclude the tutorial. Hope you guys liked it. If you guys have any questions, uh, sure do hit me up on Twitter. And I would like to thank One Liter Coder for giving me this opportunity to uh, give a tutorial on this notebook. And see you all.